In this Illustrator tutorial, I'll show you how you can hide and show when I hide and show the entire ah, oh my goodness, it's so cold. Ah, me without my hair. Ah, that's a look. Reorder and organize your artwork to make it easier to export your layers to Photoshop or convert your layers to frames to animate. Hello Creative! It's your graphics girl of graphicsgirl.com. That's graphics with PH and S. Girl with no I and three R's. And I'm here with a quick tip to help you design your brand. To begin with, you'll need to show your layers panel. To do that, you come to Window, Layers. You can see in my workspace I already had my layers showing. So with my layers panel up, you can see that this file that I have has many layers already built into it. In fact, so many, I think I need to resize my panel. You can resize your layers panel by coming to the bottom and getting the double headed arrow. When you see that, you click down and drag. And now you can see all of the rest of my layers. Default, a brand new file will have one layer. And that layer by default will creatively be named layer one. The whole point of having layers is that you can segment different parts of your design and maybe even lock elements down so that other elements are more easily selected. Lastly, as I mentioned in my intro, I like using layers in Illustrator so that I can export them to other programs like Photoshop or Adobe Animate. But you don't need to have layers in order to create artwork. Having layers allows you to segment different sections of your artwork to more easily select just that part of the whole. And you can see that each layer that I'm showing you here has this little carrot or arrow that you could click to expand it. Here, if I wanted to hide the TM or trademark on my logo, I would come to the immediate left of that sublayer and click on the visibility icon. Now on my logo, you no longer see the TM. In general, you can create your own layers and they may or may not be comprised of sublayers. So to create a brand new layer, here's what you do. You come to the options menu in the upper right hand corner of your layers panel and you select new layer. Or what I like to do is come to the icon at the bottom of your layers panel to the immediate left of the trash can and click new layer. If you'd like to reorder your layers, you'll click on that layer and drag. You can see here that the cursor now changes to a little fist and the light blue highlight shows you exactly where it's going to be located when you drop. If I wanted to move it all the way down to the bottom of all of my layers, I could click and drag it to the bottom. In general, it's a good idea to label your layers so you know what you're looking at. To relabel your layers, you can double click that layer and here I'll call this one background. So layers work like skins of an onion that if you peel back each ring, you can see more and more of the core until there's nothing there. You can think of layers like rings of an onion in that the uppermost layer is the one that's on the top of the others. Here, the red circle overlaps my head. If I come over here and hide that red circle, why well, you can see that it was hiding more of the top of my head up here. And the bottom most layer here, if I give myself a rectangle here of a neutral color, you can see that the background, being the bottommost layer, is behind my icon. If I wanted to have my background locked down so that I didn't accidentally select it, I could come here to the immediate right of the visibility icon. I could click down one time and lock that layer down. Now, when I come and try to select it, it is not selectable. So if you ever wanted to see what I looked like without eyeglasses, why there you go. Woo! Oh, see, without makeup, it's getting scarier 
and scarier. And you can see that I'm left with just that background layer. And because it's locked, when I roll into the artwork, why my icon changes to something that indicates that it cannot be edited. So turning on all these again, you can see to the immediate right of that lock that each one of these layers has their own unique color. And this comes in handy when you're showing your guides. I do Command or Control U to turn on my smart guides, which I generally don't have on. You can see that the collar has an aqua outline. To differentiate it from the green outline on my neck layer. The iris color there has a beige, and when I look at the iris layer, why? It's beige. So it's really handy to see the difference between different layers by their guide outline. Another advantage of having layers is that maybe you want to play around with elements. Let's say I wanted to play around and change the color of my lipstick. Here in my lips layer, I could grab that and make a duplicate by rolling over the new layer icon at the bottom of my layers panel. And when I let go, it would make a lips copy layer. Clicking that layer to be inside of it, I could now select my lips and let's say make it like I'm wearing black lipstick. Very goth of me. You can make a duplicate of a layer by grabbing it and rolling over the new layer icon or by selecting that layer and coming to the options menu at the top and choosing duplicate. Now I've got a copy of a copy, but unlike Xerox copies, each copy is identical to one another. I could select these layers by hitting shift, click both of them and drag them on down to the trash can. Or you guessed it, you can come to the options menu and choose to delete. If you don't click and drag it to the trash can, but rather just select that layer and then click the trash can, Illustrator will confirm that, are you sure you wanna delete that layer? So for that reason, I generally always select it and then take it to the trash. All right, so now with all of my layers showing, I can double click my hand to bring it back to fit to view, turn off my smart guides because they bother me. So now that I have all of these layers, if I wanted to export this to Photoshop, I would come here to File, Export. And when you come to Export As, from the Format dropdown, you could choose Photoshop. And when you choose Export, you'll have to have the color modality as CMYK if you want to write layers for whatever reason, Illustrator, for as long as I can remember it, has always had RGB not allow layers. So it, I guess, assumes that you want it to make it uh, for print if you want to preserve the layers. And some options here, you want to go for maximum editability. I would always recommend that you keep your type optimized with Hinted if you want to anti-alias or smooth out your type. The most important thing to note here is that you have control over the resolution or number of pixels per inch, or PPI. When you are exporting to CMYK, it thinks that maybe you wanna use this for print. So here, it gives you options to either be screen, medium, or high. Here, you would wanna choose high if this is in fact for printed work, and then you would click OK. But another trick that I like to do is save my artwork in layers to export it for animation. Here, it would convert these layers into frames in Adobe Animate, which used to be called Flash. In my full opening intro animation, you can see that I put these elements on in a frame-by-frame -frame animation. So to do that, you can come to File, Export, Export As, and this time from the Format dropdown, you'll choose Flash, or SWF file format and export. And the last note I just want to make about layers is to say that while you're creating in Illustrator, you wouldn't want to break your creative flow to segment out different elements and put them on their own layer. Generally speaking, you'll go ahead and create, keeping that process flowing. And then when you decide, okay, this is my final artwork, I'm done my logo here. If I do find it's helpful, to put it in layers, maybe to lock elements down so I can work on other things or hide and show different elements. Then one last trick I wanted to show you would be this. 
If you're going to select artwork in order to create a brand new layer and you want to put that artwork directly in the same exact place because you've already figured out its placement, you would come to that art element in Command or Control C to copy it, create your new layer with your new layer icon at the bottom. You can see by default it generally will put it directly above the layer you're in and then you want to either paste in front paste in back or paste in place. Because it's on its own layer, it actually is now arbitrary. The pasting in front and pasting in back would allow you to put that element either right above or right below that element. Because it's on its own layer, you could just as easily say paste in front. Because you're in this new layer, when you paste in front or Command or Control F to place it in front. And now if I came to my lips layer to hide it, why it doesn't look like it went anywhere because it is on layer 16. As I hide and show now layer 16, it is in the same exact place as the layer below it. So if you're going to select out elements and you want to paste it, why it's going to paste it as a copy somewhere. But if you wanted to paste it directly in front, here I'll go ahead and hide that red circle layer. I'll come here to my hair layer and now Command or Control F to place it in front. Why now that red circle is not being shown by the red circle layer, but rather the one that says hair. When I hide and show the entire, ah, oh my goodness, it's so cold. Ah, me without my hair. Ah, that's a look. It's all on one layer. So that's how you can use layers in Illustrator. If you found this video helpful, give it a like, Okay. share it with your friends, and please subscribe to my channel. And don't forget, for free marketing, branding, and design resources, head over to graphicsgirl.com. That's graphics with PH and S, girl, with no I and three R's. And I'm here to help you design your brand.